friends and subscribers. This is China News for December 2013. Happy New Year to all of you, wherever you are. And this is the last uh, China News of the year. So let's find out uh, what's happening uh, in this busy month. Well, more problems with the Senkaku Diaoyu Islands dispute. Latest is Tokyo's defense plan targets China, experts say. Uh, basically, uh, Tokyo laid out a defense plan of their controlled island chains, and the Chinese are uh, putting out rhetoric that the defense plan is actually offensive in nature against China. Now, many countries around the world have had uh, some comments about this this December because what has happened is that uh, Japan's leader Abe had visited a World War II shrine which uh, actually honors several war criminals uh, and this has sparked outrage from the Chinese and uh, a lot of protests out there about it and uh, not only that from South Korea which also had uh, many atrocities done to it during the World War II era. As they say, paybacks are hell, and the Chinese are hell-bent on getting payback at, at some time or another. Japan has been beefing up their military and talking, talking tough, as well as China. And uh, in my opinion, I think it's best if everyone just kind of stays out of the dispute and let uh, the two sides figure out an uh, agreement or agree to disagree. Um, this can lead nowhere that will be productive or advantageous to peace in the region or the world. So uh, this is going to continue to go on as China builds up their navy. And uh, this is not the only dispute in the Asian region that we should be talking about. Uh, but there has been not enough coverage on uh, this dispute. Recently, you uh, may have heard in late October that China for the first time sent patrol vessels all the way to the Hawaiian Islands area. This had never happened before and there's also several disputes with US vessels and Chinese vessels in the Southeast Asia area including one confrontation in which the Chinese Navy told the United States to stand down and leave international waters uh, which it was in not approaching Chinese waters and these, these type of disputes are going to be ongoing for the remainder of this decade. Another hot news that you won't hear a lot about uh, inside or outside of China, more Xinjiang attacks in the western region of China. This is, of course, the Muslim area of uh, China that China controls. And uh, there have been many deaths and many held out there in Xinjiang. Just this past week, there was, I believe, five that were killed in a terrorist attack. And uh, this is also a story that's not going to go away because the people in that area uh, do not agree with Beijing and have never really considered themselves a part of China. And on the front page of China Daily this past week, Shrine Visit Fury Mounts. This is part of the uh, Senkaku Diaoyu Islands problems. Uh, Abe had visited a, a shrine which... Uh, basically outraged Koreans and Chinese alike. This is a picture of Koreans that are protesting. And uh, this is front page news. Uh, people are very upset uh, about uh, what they think is Japan's imperialist uh, posturing. Chinese students in the U.S. take road to luxury. More and more Chinese students are buying real estate, automobiles, and things like that while they're studying in the United States, Canada, and other countries, including Australia. And basically, the rules are that uh, students may bring back one car tax-free to China when their studies are over. And a lot of them are doing that. They're buying luxury cars, of course, with the money from their parents or business people in China, bringing it back, paying no penalty on it. And uh, th this is another way for them to get around the import-export duties and tariffs. And we'll see more of this. A lot of Chinese students, they go abroad just for luxury shopping and things like this, automobiles. They're doing it in Europe. They're doing it in the United States, Canada. They're doing it uh, all over the world. An interesting article in the uh, Sunday Morning Magazine here, Taking Note, talks about how 
Chinese are moving into other assets rather than paper. Gold, silver, and gemstones, all portable and concealable, have considerable appeal with paper being a confidence issue. Jade has always been desirable in Chinese societies, and recently jade prices have skyrocketed. David Cameron here in uh, Shanghai talking at uh, Jiao Tong University, which you may or may not remember is one of the key universities for the Chinese cyber attack team. In fact, they even have contests where students uh, compete to be the best hackers and crackers in China. They're proud of it. And that is uh, one of the key areas where they have launched uh, cyber attacks against the United States and other countries uh, in espionage. And I know this for a fact because I've been on the campus many times and talked to many people. And uh, David Cameron there spewing his rhetoric, including reassuring students in China that there is no limit on the number of Chinese who could study in the UK. This leads to other areas of concern for people in the UK as if there's no limit on student visas, there may be no limit on work visas going forward. And the UK is already in a tough position with high unemployment, rapidly rising real estate prices, and a uh, leadership problem in the UK. Uh, we know that their uh, North Sea oil has dried up and their economy couldn't be in a worse condition. The debt to GDP ratio is ungodly. And here we have David Cameron rooting on the Chinese to become more influential in the uh, world economy and politics and whatnot. Unbelievable. But uh, for those of you in the UK, I think that uh, you should have your voice heard. You should uh, understand that uh, Cameron is a turncoat and he is a globalist and someone that does not have the best interests of the UK people, the public, in mind. This picture here is a photo of a smuggling route between Hong Kong and Shenzhen. This is uh, something that's been going on for you know several decades here, but uh, really it, it is kind of ramped up uh, as of the last year because uh, there's less and less income for the general public. Uh, unemployment is quite high, inflation is quite high. They're looking to get an edge, trying to make more money. One of the ways to do that is to buy duty-free or low-tax goods in Hong Kong and bring them over to the mainland without paying tariffs. This is a very lucrative trade. And as you can see in this apartment complex at the border, uh, you could smuggle uh, a whole variety of things, including actually cars. They'll smuggle over car parts in parks and assembly GDP in the growth mainland. Hit 7.76 this year, slightly up from their prediction. Of course, this shouldn't be any surprise because whatever they say is going to happen usually happens whether it does or not because it's a command and control economy. So they could say that it's 7.4 and it could be 7.6. Well, it, actually, it could be a lot lower than that. Same with inflation. We know it's much higher than what the government is saying, but they control the rhetoric and they control the economy. So uh, we never really know exactly what the, the real uh, skinny is on stuff, but uh, we have to kind of filter through the numbers, don't we? And the cartoon of the day here is Shinzo Abe. In the forefront, you see him holding a Japanese flag and having a hand outreached, waving uh, friendly. In the back is a shadow of him with a samurai sword and the uh, rising sun war flag of Japanese old. This is how most Chinese view uh, Shinzo Abe based on the uh, central government's rhetoric that they put out uh, daily in newspapers and television. So this is uh, basically, uh, this is an interesting article in a Sunday morning magazine here, taking note, this is talking about how Chinese are moving away from paper assets and into other areas such as gold, silver, and gemstones, all portable and concealable, having considerable appeal compared to paper, which is losing confidence. Jade has always been a desirable asset in Chinese societies and recent sharp Increases in the price of jade have uh, actually taken interest with Chinese. Diamonds have become more and more popular as well. So they feel the inflation crunch, and they're even looking at collectibles such as old notes and antiques to get out of fiat 
and to get into something that's going to hold its value with inflation here hovering right around the 9% in, in real inflation. So that something that us uh, gold and silver stackers have always talked about, moving out of fiat into hard assets, well, the Chinese have known this for centuries, and uh, the cycles continue. And uh, a lot of the older generation here uh, have been doing this and will continue to do this, and that is why China is the number one gold market in the world because of the ravages of inflation and fiat money becoming worthless. Cashing in on Mao Nostalgia, this is really uh, quite uh, amazing that after all these years, uh, Chinese could forget what happened during the Cultural Revolution, but you see more and more uh, Maoist-style fashions and Maoist propaganda being used as a popular culture thing to be proud of rather than something that would be embarrassing such as uh, the uh, Nazi materials and Nazi, Nazi memorabilia and uh, things uh, of World War II for the Germans. Well, it's not the same here. Why? I have no idea because we know during the Cultural Revolution, during that period in China, that uh, Mao and his uh, alliance was responsible for perhaps between 60 and 80 million Chinese uh, deaths, either by starvation, either by disease, famine, or murder. And uh, so this is really troubling to see uh, more and more propaganda with Mao being a hero rather than a goat, which uh, by all accounts, if you look at real history, uh, he certainly was. His mistakes were very deep and troubling. Yet, uh, revisionist history. Those who write the history books are the ones that are able to control history. And uh, you'd be hard-pressed to find anybody who dislikes Mao to talk out. Now, there are plenty of people that do, obviously. In fact, in, in private, most people have uh, spoke of their distaste of, the, of that whole period. That doubles at local government level in two years. We knew that this was going to be an issue. I had talked about it even several years ago, that China's local governments are in huge debt. 3.3 trillion, by latest estimates, could be more because you never get the full scoop from local government officials who tend to lie a lot about uh, bad news. China tried to get uh, grain and other food de uh, dependency issues solved here going forward to 2014. They're looking at a 95 percent self-sufficiency for grains. Now we know that they have some key business agreements with the Ukraine and some other countries that are big grain producers to allow the Chinese to have some uh, security when it comes to food production with a growing population and a population that is consuming more. So the only area really where China is lacking is in energy production, but they're making uh, inroads on that. So the key is when they finally go off the dollar and they uh, move you know, more and more and more into gold to have some dependency issues on food and energy and other trade areas to be relieved so that when the switch comes over, uh, they won't uh, feel the effects of tensions with world trade because they'll already have uh, self-sufficiency in many areas. This is part of the new, new plan, which was discussed here in late 2013.